Alright guys, how you guys doing? In this video, I will be comparing the 13 inch MacBook Pro 2011 and the new MacBook Air 2011. Of course, again, the 13 inch, it would only be fair if I covered 13 inches. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I've had a lot of people asking me, should I get the 13 inch MacBook Air or should I go for the Pro version? And as both of them are the same size, it's uh, kind of a good thing to go over it and do some speed tests, which is what I'm gonna do in this video. Some of you are gonna be saying, what on earth? You know, put the speed test aside, what on earth is wrong with your hair? I did have a fight with uh, my lawnmower, so I will get comments on it, so it's probably best to kind of clear it up. Now, the difference between the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air is £100. The MacBook Pro you can pick up for £999, and the new MacBook Air is £100 more expensive, and it's a bit strange. Uh, and I say strange because there's a lot more you can do with the MacBook Pro in terms of features, the hardware it's better uh, you know it's got a faster processor and it's a full dual core i5 experience 2.3 gigahertz versus 1.7 and of course the macbook air is low voltage so it's less you know even though it's 1.7 it's still you know not on par uh, or the full 1.7 because they've really had to dim it down because of the size of the new macbook airs both are four gigs of ram the MacBook Pro 13 inch has a traditional hard drive, so you've got 328, 320 gig, sorry, uh, with 5400 RPM. The MacBook Air's got a better storage type, even although it's less in quantity, but it's the new flash storage. Now the good thing about the MacBook Pro is you can, you know, add an SSD to it. You cannot make any adjustments in terms of uh, internal upgrades to the MacBook Air other than uh, replacing the flash storage which you wouldn't really want to do anyway because it's going to cost you quite a lot. Talking about customization, the MacBook Pro you can do a lot of customization to it. You can add more RAM, you know, say 12 months down the line, two years down the line. Instead of getting a brand spanking new machine, you can, there's some modifica modifications you can do to the super drive i.e. remove it and then put a secondary hard drive inside it. So there's a lot of good things you can do with the MacBook Pro and it's really a hundred pound cheaper. The MacBook Pro also has a built-in super drive for those of you who still use CDs, uh, whereas the new MacBook Air doesn't and hence why I have got the good old Xbox 360 HD DVD drive. Sometimes when I want to install some stuff that's still on CD or look at DVDs, this is what I use, the best £20 spent ever. The MacBook Pros are also good in the fact that they have a much higher resolution camera on the front. It's the FaceTime HD, uh, whereas the old ones are still using the normal FaceTime, which isn't, of course, as good as the HD version. Now, the three negative points, in my opinion, about the 13-inch MacBook Pro are as follows. The screen is horrible. I say horrible if the first time you look at a 13-inch MacBook Pro, you will find it quite nice. But when you use a MacBook Air, you cannot go back to a 13 inch MacBook Pro. It is just horrible, there's just reflections, and even in this video you can see reflections. Whereas the MacBook Air has a kind of, although it's a glossy as well, but it's a more high resolution glossy, uh, and it's such a pleasure to use. And for someone like me who uses a Mac quite a lot, I'm sitting you know, at it at different angles, different positions, um, you know, everywhere from the desk to table, you get the point. And, and because it's, it's just much, easier to the eyes when I'm doing stuff, watching videos or just looking at text. It's just a more, much more pleasure to, you know, watch your eyes don't get iffy and so on. The second negative thing about the MacBook Pro is the weight of it. Now the MacBook Air, as you can see, is quite light and I mean quite light. And the reason why it's light is because it doesn't have a super drive and it doesn't have the big chunky hard drives, which, welcome to the MacBook Pro, it does. And number three, poor allocation. You know, the MacBook Pros, as beastly as they are, I don't like how all the ports are on the one side. That's a, that, that's all your ports. That can get quite frustrating, and I like the, the route they've taken with the MacBook Airs in that they've split it up. So you've got some ports here, and you've got some ports here, and it's just, I find it much more easier, or when I've got my cables connected inside, I don't want too much going into the one side, or I can't reach for some of the USB ports. I can easily just put it in this side. As his personal preference, I like the port allocation on this beast right here. So guys, the first test is gonna be a boot up test, so let's go ahead and at the same time. 
and I expect the MacBook Air to win this hands down simply because of the storage, it's a much more faster SSD for the win and uh, of course you can put an SSD in the MacBook Pro should you wish to spend that X amount and there we go we are into line this has still got Snow Leopard on unfortunately as this is not my machine I wasn't able to convince my mate to install a new OS but there we go so first and then second let's move on to the second test so this next test is going to consist of me importing files into Photoshop at the same time. This of course is the MacBook Pro 13 inch and this is the MacBook Air. And let's go one, two, three. Let's see which one does it first. To me the MacBook Air is a bit ahead. As you can see the preview window came up first. And I'm guessing because it's picking up from the actual SSD drive itself. Um, it's on a winner. So there we go. The MacBook Air working like a champ. And yeah, it is a wee bit ahead. Let's see which one wins. So tight, it's a tight one. And there we go. Yep, the MacBook Air has indeed won. This is the final picture, and it's only are imported into the MacBook Pro. So the MacBook Air wins. Ting ting ting. And this should be interesting. Let's apply some three D effects at the same time. Which one is it going to be? Boom! Same time! Wow, isn't that a surprise? Let's try something else. Let's try this effect for test 2. And which one? Wow, almost the same. I didn't really see a difference. And let's apply this third and last filter, which is a sphere. Which one is it going to be? Let's apply some random filters, some standard filters shall I say, and let's go for graphic pen. And boom, the MacBook Air wins again. Let's go into stylize. Oh wow, let's check this one out. Mm, almost the same. Let's continue on with some more effects. And there we go, just going to run through them. Wow, the iGear logo shows up pretty nicely, doesn't it just? Let's go into a different category, let's go into texture and wow, let's try this one here. And it's uh, roughly the same. And guys, the last test is iMovie test. Let's try and export them at the same time and let's see what time it gives us. Just a quick note, let's try and you know run through this. I don't find any lag on either machine. Uh, I find it you know pretty smooth. And um, yeah, there's, which is a good thing of course, the last thing you want to be doing is, you know, editing a film and then finding out you have to wait. And guys, now for the main showdown, let's export these both at the same time in HD 1080p. And there we go. Let's set them both and press export at the same time. So it's one, two and three. Both screens and I'm just going to give you a quick view. About two minutes and about three minutes and my guess, well, this has gone up to three minutes as well now. The MacBook Air is up to four minutes, three minutes, four minutes, four minutes, four minutes. So both seem to be at four minutes. This has gone down to three. The MacBook Air is just constant at four. So let's give you a good pan and show you for yourself. There's three minutes and we're not going to be able to see this now. And that's up to four minutes, so it's a minute difference. How big of a difference that is in terms of your kind of you know your work? If this is if this is a work machine, is that minute really going to help? Both are at three minutes now, and the blue bars are roughly at the same place. Um, so there we go, guys. I hope this test has been useful. I hope it's going to give you an indication as to which machine you should get. Both have got the backlit keyboards, which is good. The MacBook Air is a very, very powerful machine, there's no doubt about it. The only reason I'd be going for a MacBook Pro is if I, you know, wanted to add more weight to my bag or if I use CDs quite a lot. If I do a lot of, you know, work with the camera, 
the HD camera built in is going to be of use. But other than that, the graphics card is the same on both machines, so you're not going to get better gaming at this per se. Although the quad, the Core i5 chip in the MacBook Pro is much more, you know, powerful. 2.3 versus 1.7. This is up to two minutes now, and this has gone, or still is, on three minutes. So it's about a minute difference between both of these machines. But guys, I hope this video has been useful. If you can join me in iglassvision.com, tons and tons of Apple-related videos. How to get the cheapest Mac, click on the screen on the annotation. It's a guide as to, you know, what the cheapest way is. I'd appreciate if you can also check my new venture out, iGear.com, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter on there. Not a problem if you don't. Understandable, not a problem. But I hope this video has helped. You can also follow me on twitter.com slash i6 region and here's a last minute pan. The MacBook Pro is almost done, less than a minute, and the MacBook Air is also about one minute. So less than a minute, about a minute. Guys, I will see you guys, as always, in another life. Cheers.